think, I think one of the problems that you bring up is this idea that a lot of startup founders have that if media publications in the technology and startup and venture capital worlds write about you, talk about you, put you on stage, build up your brand, that this will somehow help you reach customers. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just then not true, right? It's, it's even less true today than it was 10 or 15 years ago when there, were, when there was a more consolidated media, right? So being in the New York Times technology section, being in on the front page of TechCrunch, it will, it will potentially bring you traffic. It might bring you a lot of people reaching out, some people saying congratulations, people in your, in your network, um, a lot of new LinkedIn requests. It'll also bring you a lot of, hey, I wanna write for you. Hey, I wanna get a job with you. Hey, I wanna, like lots of interesting biz dev type of things. But customers, unless no. your customers are actually you know, whatever tech industry, VC industry professionals, it will not bring you cost. No, no one who is interested in yoga is reading TechCrunch. So if you have some <laughs> amazing new yoga invention, okay, TechCrunch might cover you, but mm -hmm. it, it will not have the impact that you think it'll have. And this, um, I think, you know, this is part of sort of a, a complex web of incentives and structures that is hard, hard to get past. Like as, as, an, as a young entrepreneur, I, I felt, I think a lot of young entrepreneurs feel this way. I wanted attention. I wanted people to pay attention to me. I wanted them to think that I was important and worthwhile and-, and Worthy of attention. Know, yeah, impressive and like somebody worth following. And, and that is a, that's a pride thing, right? It's a, I want prestige. I want pride. I want to be put on stage. Um, but that is a very different goal than I want my company to succeed and help its customers. I want to attract more people who need our product. I want to be profitable and grow and be able to sustain this business long-term those things are completely disconnected. And so I think when, when you are facing this challenge, you just have to go in knowing that this ecosystem, that the technology venture capital ecosystem is designed to make you feel like you are not worthy and you are not good enough unless you get their blessing. Mm -hmm. Unless they this give you money, so true. <laughs> you're not going to feel good enough, right? And that... Um, that can leave a big hole in your chest that you're sort of always trying to fill until you get it. And then it's only after you get it that you realize, oh shit, that, that did not, that did not do anything for making my, my business. business better or my customers better or my product better or bringing customers to me or all of the things that I now need to do successfully in order to raise the next round and get the next bit of coverage and, mm -hmm. and avoid being seen. I mean, I, I think honestly, it is so much better, so much better to never raise venture capital or um, to be rejected than to raise it successfully one or two times, but not become a unicorn. Mm -hmm. Because That's exactly, yeah. are, those, those stuck in the middle companies, they don't make money for their founders. They don't make money for their employees, right? Everybody's paid under market with the hope that your stock options will someday produce big results. And they almost never do, right? 99 out of 100 VC investments don't return, um, you know, their re expected rate of return for the capital invested. So that's your situation at Moz. Sorry? That's your situation at Moz, right? Yeah, you yeah. You have 18%. Exactly, right? so you know, Moz might be a $50 million a year company that's profitable and throwing off $5 million in revenue a year. And, and it might be um, growing, but grow, but it's growing too slowly to be able to sort of get to uh, IPO stage and the metrics aren't quite IPO worthy. And so it, it's stuck there and it's not getting acquired by anyone because there's very few other companies in the space who are very big who would want to acquire it. So it's just this, you know, asset that might someday be worth something, but likely might be worth nothing. And investors have put what, 30 some odd million dollars into that business. So it's got to make a ton of money 
you know, those investors really are not going to be happy with an outcome under $300 million. How's, how's Moz going to get there? You know, it's a, it's a real struggle. 